Hello, it's Corey here at Netta's Nursery in Posen, and today I thought I'd walk you around the greenhouses and give you a peek at some of the plants that are blooming right now. So behind me I have the echinacea, also known as the coneflower. I'll give you a little closer look at those, and then I'll just kind of zip around this greenhouse and show you some of the other plants that are in full bloom. So here's some of that echinacea, the coneflowers, that's the cone right on top. And what's common with coneflowers is they start to open this way where the petals kind of start to unfurl. So they start out tight and then they open up and then they start to uh, drape down and create kind of a, an umbrella uh, shape to them. And that's natural for the coneflower. But there are some varieties that stay more upright, like this pink one here has more of kind of a daisy-like flower. And this one happens to have a nice yellow orange center which is great but then there's other shapes like these here this is a double scoop mandarin uh, and that kind is a little bit different because you can see the cone has a really bright color and then all the petals start to drape down like that so you end up with this bit of a torpedo shape on it which is uh, really adds some interest in the garden here's another one called cranberry cupcake and it also it has that kind of double uh, flower on it which is really quite interesting and the prices white are still in bloom I showed you these weeks ago we have hardly done anything they're just starting to fade on these and the nice thing about coneflowers is if you kind of trim them back they do reflower again so uh, they're really interesting that way here's another cupcake for you so uh, let me show you the next flower right here we have some blue hyssop you can see it's got just a really nice little flower on it. These are eager to get planted in the ground because they've been in these pots and they just start, want to get into the soil. Uh, in fact, they're starting to lose their leaves in the bottom just because they're much happier when they're in the ground. That's the case with a lot of these plants, these perennials. This one is the Dark Tower Beard Tongue and it has these really delicate but beautiful white and purple flowers and then it has leaves that kind of graduate from a reddish purple down to green so really a nice plant it's a very durable one in this area as well next plant now I'm showing you some Monarda, also known as Bee Balm. This one you're usually probably, if you've seen it before, you've seen a really big bush. This one is the dwarf version called Pardon My Lavender, and it only gets like 14 to 18 inches, so a little bit more manageable. It also comes in a pink and a purple and a kind of reddish color as well. And the bees are drawn to this like crazy. The colors on these are really fantastic and they have a pretty long bloom time. Right next to it I'm going to show you some of the Russian sage that just started blooming. It has those nice kind of lavender-like uh, plumes that kind of come up and this one here normally gets quite large. It's an easy one to grow uh, unless you get the denim and lace version one from Proven Winners. That one's a little bit smaller than the other varieties, a little more uh, compact which is really nice let's see what can I show you next got a couple of clematis that are starting to bloom I wish I could have gotten a picture of the diamond ball but that one sold as soon as it opened and that one looked just like the picture that they have on their website it was this beautiful double white uh, so clematis is always beautiful that's Viva Polonia right there this here is some bush clematis it grows upright instead of uh, being a climber so we put it in the cages just to kind of keep it up um, but you can see it has these great kind of star shaped flowers on them and it gets full of flowers and here we have some of the iris we still have a lot of those coming up and sending up blooms looking fantastic here's the it's bread and ginger Another beautiful iris. And this one here, out of trouble. Those flowers are beautiful. And the Rhinelander with the nice purpley kind of violet color going on there. Another out of trouble in bloom. And then this is the Cinque Terre. This is one of my favorites. Looks fantastic. Uh, these are all bearded irises. Uh, we do have some of the Caesar's Brother Siberian iris as well. Uh, those are outside. Let me do a cut to those. These are the Caesar's Brother Siberian irises. You can see 
how they kind of clump. So you can divide these up over time. But these we just, we haven't done anything with them. We haven't had to uh, do any kind of cleaning or prepping or anything like that. And they have this brilliant, dark, rich purple color and lots of blooms on them. They add a, a nice uh, crush of color here on the side of the driveway. Oh, and we have a potentella that's blooming. I think this is the lemon meringue version of that. Nice flowers on that. Oh, and there's some more Caesar's brother over here. People usually recognize the hostas for their leaves, but they do send up these really beautiful flowers. And you can see different ones send up different types of flowers. The big trend right now in hostas is to have pure white flowers, uh, but they usually also have some lavender ones, uh, the old fashioned ones do, so those are always nice. And then over here, looks like we're gonna have some Ligularia very soon in bloom and the astilbe is starting to bloom. I always like with the astilbe, here's some that's getting ready to bloom. It has kind of that uh, almost like a pipe cleaner, feathery kind of look to it. So nice flowers on those. Loads and loads of flowers on the hostas and the hummingbirds love the flowers of the hosta as well. Here's one called Earth Angel and that is just a nice trumpet type bloom on that. Just gorgeous. And here in Greenhouse 4 we have all kinds of corabels, uh, also known as hookeras, and those are sending up their blooms right now. So a lot of them are going to have white flowers, but then others are going to have more pink. There's also several that have more of a creamy type of flower on it. And the big thing that the corabels or the hookeras, as they're also known as, uh, are known for are these diverse leaf colors. And some of them are full shade, some of them are full sun, so you have a lot of versatility in these. And you can see just how gorgeous these flowers are on those. We've got some more over here and more over here. This one has almost a yellow lime tint to it in the flower, but look at the dark leaves on it. And then look at the variegated leaves on this one. This one has almost a little hint of orange in it. And then these are the Paris. These here send up blooms all summer long. And they're nice pink ones, and then they have the nice green variegated leaves as well. And these kind of get bigger and bigger and bigger as they get older, so they're really beautiful flowers. Over here, look at the leaves of the paprika. Really great kind of autumn type colors, but they keep these colors all year round, which is fantastic. Even in the spring when the snow melts, you're still going to have some color left on these leaves. Now, what next? The going bananas, daylily, still too early to see it in all its glory, but you can get an idea of that yellow that it's going to cut have and it's a little larger flower it's absolutely beautiful over here there's one of the happy returns that's kind of more of the traditional yellow little smaller flower absolutely beautiful and we're going to start seeing a lot more daylily blooms once these start as well they're not blooming yet but these are ornamental onions that are getting ready they're going to be sending up beautiful purple flowers soon there is one over here Look at the Medusa. I love the twisty leaf on that. There's one, a little lighter colored one. But look at, there's going to be lots of color in this row very soon, especially because right next door is the Rudbeckia, which is not blooming yet. I bet we're going to have flowers tomorrow if we have sunshine. So uh, once the Rudbeckia starts, it's all color all the time. Now this one is the Gooseneck Loose Strife, and its trademark is this bend in its flower, which actually, look at this, when the wind blows, it actually kind of looks like a goose kind of walking along your yard. Uh, my mom has one of these in the driveway, or along the driveway, and I asked her last year, like, why aren't you carrying this? It's a fantastic flower, and she just said, oh, we just didn't get any last year, so I told her she had to get it this year, but it, it really fills out and you have a huge you'll have a whole flock of these goosenecks 
if you get this plant. So it's, it's a beauty. And last stop here in Greenhouse One, uh, we started bringing a lot of the hydrangeas inside uh, just because we uh, like to have them nice and close so you can easily shop for them and compare the different varieties. Right now, the only one that's really blooming is going to be the Invincible Spirits, uh, which I showed you before, the pink ones that are the mop heads. But I'm going to show you, we do have some that are going to be blooming probably later on this week. So I'll show you those right now. Right over here... Oh, see, the Annabelles are starting as well. So these are the white flowered ones. These are the old fashioned ones. So these will have flowers in no time as well. And a lot of these we wintered over ourselves. So you can see how quick they are. But this one here is the Firelight. That one is kind of similar to, say, a vanilla strawberry, a little bit more of a dome shaped flower rather than a pointed flower. And it gets a little bit, maybe a little bit more red. Uh, but that one's coming along nicely. Over here is the Candelabra. That, look at how many blooms that's going to have. This one tends to get really long blooms, so this is just the start of the blooms. It'll keep sending up more. There's a lot of blooms kind of starting to show up on all of these. So in the next two weeks, probably even less, you're going to see a lot more over here. We have the endless summer varieties that are supposed to, in general, prefer just morning sun, but we've had them in full sun. We've kind of tempered them. For full sun and they've been doing great so this is these are the experimental ones and they're already getting their blooms so those are going to be flowering soon so we'll see how these do in full sun if we notice them starting to uh, get a little weary we'll move them into a shadier spot but for now we're going to enjoy this so here you go a little bit of bloom action going on for you here at netta's